I'm Justin Mkweo with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines. And in the program today, Malawi launches the 2063 agenda and ADMAC to make 20% loss in its maize sales. We have these and other news stories. Stay tuned. Malawi has launched the successor to Vision 2020 called the National Transformation Agenda 2063 with hope that it shows fruits after a total failure of Vision 2020. Among others, the Vision wants to achieve an economically developed Malawi which is self-reliant with equal wealth distribution. President Lazarus Chagoya, who was the guest of honor, expressed hope that the agenda will be fulfilled. If we ourselves do not work hard, work smart, and work together, we will not succeed. I believe that our key to the creation of a great nation is the creation of a great citizenry to build such a nation. One of the ways to create a great citizenry fit for the task of building the great Malawi we want by 2063 is to decisively read ourselves and our society of one of our greatest, most common, and most repeated national sins. The national sin I speak of here is the sin of waste. As a people, we must cure our proclivity for waste. We waste too much time on trivia and idleness. We waste too much money on entitlements and consumption. We waste too much land on crops for subsistence living in an annual cycle of poverty and dependency. We waste too much aid on sustaining the careers and the livelihoods of foreigners whose very professions depend on us remaining in abject poverty. We waste too much public offices on people who sit around adding no value to our quest for good government. We waste too many foreign embassy jobs on people who are nothing more than diplomatic tourists. We waste too much public discourse on politics of division, one-upmanship, fault-finding, slander, and misinformation. We waste too much of our minds and thoughts on gossip and frivolous tales about other people's private affairs. We waste too much of our business activities on get-rich-quick schemes that fuel the greed and corruption now strangling government's entire procurement system with overpriced goods and under-delivered services. And this is what has really derailed Vision 2020 that we made closure to last year. And to make matters worse, not only are we blind to our collective wastefulness, but we are quick to regard other things as wasteful which are not. For example, our development budget is always criminally low compared to our current recurrent budget, as is our investment in strengthening governance institutions. Vice President of Malawi, Saulo Sirima, said the agenda will be made to law so that every government abides by it. Our resolution is that we as Malawians desire and resolve to be an inclusively wealthy and self-reliant industrialized upper middle income country by the year 2063 so we can fund our development needs primarily by ourselves. Already projections indicate that growing at an annual average of 6% Malawi will attain 1,064 US dollar per capita by the year 2030, hence immediately reaching low mid middle income status. We will hit US dollar 4,075 per capita by 2063 or sooner, hence reaching upper middle income status. 
if the country is more innovative and productive, these targets can be reached much earlier. The structure of the MW2063. Your Excellency, the MW2063 is anchored on three pillars as follows. Number one, agriculture productivity and commercialization. Number two, industrialization with mining as an important integral. And number three, urbanization with development of tourism hubs as a key component. Achievement of the three pillars will be catalyzed by seven enablers, namely A, environmental sustainability, B, economic infrastructure, C, human capital development, D, private sector dynamism, E, public sector performance, effective governance institutions and systems, F, mindset change. The agenda is being championed by the National Planning Commission, NPC, and Professor Francis Mkandawile is its board chairperson. The Malawi 2063 has been formulated in a thoroughly and inclusive and consultative manner, albeit the challenges brought by the COVID-19 en environment notwithstanding. The vision has considered views and contributions from different stakeholders, particularly Malawians, both within and outside the country. The new vision is our lighthouse, beckoning hope that the hour for Malawi has come in charting pathways that will enable our nation to join the ranks of the rising African nations. Your Excellency, the Malawi 2063 vision with her tagline, Kusinta, Ziko, Latu, Mokumena Aliense, is a long-term development blueprint for our nation. In it, Malawians have clearly spoken. They want inclusivity with and self-reliant nation by 2063. They aspire to be, uh, to have a knowledge-based upper middle income industrialized economy built around three pillars of agriculture productivity and commercialization, industrialization and urbanization. Your Excellency, Malawi 2063 is a vision that is intended to create a new Malawi that is working for self-enrichment to ensure that our political independence, which we have enjoyed for the past uh, 57 years, cascades into economic independence, not only for the current generation, but also for the generations to come. An independence that will see us become self-sufficient and reliant for on external assistance. Malawis, Malawians have therefore, through this vision, resolved to be an inclusively wealthy and self-reliant industrialized upper middle class income country by the year 2063. Moving on with the program, Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation, ADMAC, is expected to make a 20% loss from its mass sales. The corporation announced that it has opened all markets across the country for the sale of 133,000 metric tons of maize, which the grain marketer has in stock. This is because ADMAC has dropped maize prices by 20% to 160 kwacha per kg from 200 kwacha per kg, a price which they bought the maize. More in this report. According to ADMAC spokesperson Agnes Chikokondovi, the maize has been heavily subsidized to benefit the poor. She added that they have rationed the maize to maximum allowable quantity of 30 kilograms per person and will work with traditional leaders and area committees to make sure that the maize is sold to intended beneficiaries. ADMAC bought 133,000 metric tons of maize translating to 133 million kilograms and spent 26.6 billion kwacha at 200 kwacha per kilogram. The grain marketer, however, will earn 21.2 billion kwacha at 160 kwacha per kilogram and the loss will have to be footed by government. Meanwhile, stakeholders have applauded the grain marketer for coming in to protect the citizens 
at a time when maize is being sold at 11,000 kwacha per 50 kg bag and citizens are traveling in economic hardships from the COVID-19 pandemic. Even though Admark is thriving to make its commercial part work year in, year out and make itself self-reliant, economist at the Polytechnic Bechan Cheleni has said there's nothing wrong with what Admark has done to drop the price because its great mandate is social protection. Cheleni said the pricing will have a huge impact on the traffic to Admark markets because people, including vendors, will rush to the markets to purchase the commodity. Consumers Association of Malawi, Kama Executive Director John Kabito, also applauded Admark for coming on the market. Kabito, however, said Admark need to be vigilant, tightening security and make the markets corrupt free in order to make sure that intended beneficiaries are buying the maize because people have already suffered the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember, this is Business Time on Times Television, TTV, with me, Justin Mkweu. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. The Malawi Stock Exchange, MSE, has registered a mixed performance in 2020. This has been noticed in the market's annual report where share volumes traded increased while the value traded decreased compared to the preceding year of 2019. More in this report. According to a report from the local capital market in the year under review, the market transacted a total of 1.6 billion shares at a total consideration of 41 billion kwacha in 3,114 trades, while in the corresponding period of 2019, the market transacted a total of 1.3 billion shares at a total consideration of 46.3 billion kwacha in 3,064 trades. This reflects an 18.3% increase in share volume traded and a negative 11.40% decrease in share value traded. Speaking in an interview, MSE Chief Executive Officer John Kamanga attributed the mixed performance to COVID-19 pandemic, political instability and listing of new companies on the market. In the year, two counters were added to the market, bringing the total to 16 after the listing of Airtel Malawi and FTH Bank. Both of the companies saw the prices going up above the initial public offer prices after listing. Even though 2021 has been faced with political stability after the June 23, 2020 elections, the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic has hit the country hard, threatening the growth of the economy. Kamanga added that he believes that the market will be better at the back of a good rainfall pattern and the affordable input program, which will result to bumper maize harvest, which is the biggest contributor to macroeconomic indicators such as inflation. The market also registered a positive return on index as reflected in the upward movement of the Malawi All Share Index from 30,252. 20 points registered on January 2, 2020 to 32,392.84 points registered on December 31st, 2020, giving a return on index of 7.08% compared to 4.30% registered in 2019. The COVID-19 pandemic is slowing down works in the Shire Valley Transformation Project, SVTP. The initiative is worth $155 million and aims at revamping irrigation in the Lower Shire and other districts. Eric Msigiti has more in this report. The Shire Valley Transformation Project is one of the biggest agricultural programs in Southern Africa, covering 43,700 hectares of irrigable land. The project also covers a distance of about 133 kilometers in Insanje and Chikwawa districts where at least 300,000 Malawians live. But COVID-19 restrictions elsewhere are affecting construction of an intake at Kapichira Falls in Chikwawa and the first six kilometers of the canal from the Shire River to farms. Speaking on the Parliamentary Committee on Governance Assurance, 
and public sector reforms toward the project in Chikwa on Wednesday, Kaira said the COVID-19 pandemic has affected works in the project. Director of Irrigation Geoffrey Mamba said later on that despite the COVID-related challenges, the project remains on course. He said once completed, the project will help increase Malawi's agricultural productivity and in the long run increase Malawi's agricultural exports. We need to reduce agricultural related imports and increase exports. In so doing, the government has been working towards development of irrigation schemes in the country. And this Shire Valley Transformation Program is one of the biggest uh, probably in the southern Africa. Area on Parliamentary Committee on Governance, Assurance and Public Sector Reforms, Chairperson Nori Bipa said the committee is satisfied with the progress being made in the project. I'm very impressed. So most of the things that transpired was the challenges that they're facing. The good thing is finance was not part of the challenges. Basically, the COVID was one of the key challenges because it has slowed their progress. Construction works in the project started in April 2020 and are expected to finish in 2031. <laughs> And lastly, Welfare Monitoring Board, the Center for Social Concern, says it is extremely difficult to understand why Malawi continues to compete with war-ravaged countries for the title of the world's poorest country. The center's executive director, Father James Ngahe, says it is shocking to note that despite Malawi never having been in a war, its citizens continue to wallow in abject poverty. Daunga Sabola brings us more. Ngai was speaking in Lirongo on Thursday when his organization launched a project which aims at empowering the citizenry to demand transparency and accountability in public finance management. He said over the years Malawi has been spending trillions of kwaja in national budgets and has received billions of kwaja in development assistance, but that Malawians continue to live miserable lives. I'm very concerned really and I still ask myself what's wrong. I really, and that's some... Um, talking with passion. I don't understand and I don't see why Malawi should be one of the poorest countries, not only in Africa, but also in the world. One of the 10 poorest, poorest countries. What I was saying is, look at Burundi, look at Eritrea, look at Somalia, look at DRC, look at Congo Brazzaville. You know, all these countries have an element of war. Look at Mozambique. But what about Malawi? Malawi is a very peaceful country. You know, I've been living in Nigeria for 20 years, there's violence there, but it's not as poor as Malawi. So what's wrong? Center for Social Accountability and Transparency Executive Director Wiri Gambandira held the Center for Social Concern for the project, which he said is critical in promoting accountability in public finance management. As a country, we have not invested on citizen engagement. I think what we've done so far is to build the capacities of um, public institutions, like the district councils, but we have not built the capacities of Malawians, the local Malawians, so that they are able to hold those in power to account on how they are using the resources. So I think it is coming at the light time when the country, I think, is facing challenges to do with corruption and abuse of public resources. So the, the, the project, I think, will definitely play a greater role in, in, in addressing the problems. Budget officer in the Ministry of Finance, Joya Shanduira, said the focus on too many projects by government has led to delays in the completion of some initiatives. Say if we uh, have several projects vis-a-vis uh, -vis our resources, then the projects will take long uh, to be implemented. Uh, what, what, what should be done is that if we should be a number of projects, a small number which can be financed, then we finish, then go to uh, another set of projects. Currently, Malawi is pursuing about 333 development projects in transport, agriculture, health, education, and many other areas. Recently, Vice President Saulo Shirima, who is also Minister of Economic Planning, said Malawi requires about 3 trillion kwaja to complete the 335 projects. Well, with that story, we have come to the end of today's edition of Business Time here on Times TV. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Justin Mkweo. And remember, we always say, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Goodbye.